I play baseball to be the best baseball player as possible. Showcases are great to get you, you know, experience to see what's around the country. You don't necessarily need showcases to get you to the next level. Context-wise, um, so I spent 11 years in Colorado training youth athletes all the way up to college and pro and even Olympic. Um, one of the biggest questions I always got from parents and even athletes is how do I create exposure and get my kid an opportunity in college? And so a lot of the times you hear about showcases and you know pushing kids to that to create exposure. What I want to discuss first is your guys' experience within showcases. How did you handle recruiting and just that overall high school pursuit uh, to create, I guess, the next step for you as you're in your baseball careers? Like I train kids over like the COVID period. And that's like the number one question like parents always ask is like, how do we get exposure? And I think that's like, you need to go back further. It's like, okay, instead of worrying about exposure, like what are you exposing first off? Like at the end of the day, like no one gives a fuck about looking at a kid that throws slow and like doesn't yeah. hit the ball right. far. Yeah. Like build the tools yeah. first and foremost before you even worry about that. And once you have those tools, you don't need as much exposure as like you think you're going to need. Like it's just going to take you going to like one perfect game event and putting up some decent combine numbers and like you're going to start hearing from people. Like I know for me, I, I mean, and I was guilty of it too growing up. It was like, uh, you gotta play on like the best travel team. You gotta be at this showcase. It's like, yeah, but I was showing up and throwing 75 miles an hour and like I was running almost an eight second 60. Like no one gives a fuck about Right. Like, yeah. no, no one was interested in like what I had to bring to the table but then like I went to when I started like okay I need to like worry more so like not as much about like playing as much but like okay I just went to like a huge growth spurt and, like I'm really fucking awkward right now I gotta like get my ass in a weight room and right, like right. develop the tool set right. and like get this part figured out before I worry about like who's gonna come looking for me when I did that okay now I'm starting to throw like mid to upper 80s I went to one event in uh, Rhode Island, and it was a perfect game event. And I was thrown on like some shitty backfield, but I popped 87. Right. And like, not that great. But once I left, I had five colleges reach out to me within three hours after the event ended. Yep. So it's like it just took one time of me like showing something decent right. that someone can look at, and that's all you need. But. The, the idea like, oh, you need exposure, you need exposure. It's like, you don't need exposure. You've got to build the tools that are going to make you a valuable asset when it is time to get exposed. Yeah, I completely agree with that because um, I get a lot of questions from kids. Like, hey, like, I want to, you know, go to this school, that school. I want to get exposure. How do I do it? Well, first of all, you fucking suck at baseball. You know, like, like I'm seeing it on your pinned tweet. You suck. You know, that's that's why you're not getting the looks. You know, and, and the, that's you. There's, there's not a whole lot of emphasis now on developing your tools. It's more so how I'm going to showcase it, right? Like Zach said, if you don't have any of this fucking showcase, you're not showcasing anything. It doesn't nope. matter if you go to a perfect game showcase that you're paying fucking five, six grand a, a, a whatever, a showcase. You go, you're literally throwing 75. You're actually, I think like an important thing to note, especially like parents, like when you show up and there's nothing to showcase, you're actually doing your kid like more of a disservice than right. anything because like, you're giving the like you know the people college, that are watching like they're they're right that's their first impression down. of you they're exactly. like oh this guy like this guy stinks right. where it's like you're better off just hey like keep him a little bit hidden 100%. go to work keep your nose down right. so then when it is time like okay like he's kind of ready to show off what he's got and then he goes right. out there man you make a huge impression as right. opposed to having to work out of that hole right. that you just kind of like put yourself in by you know just trying to like have someone view you when there wasn't really anything to see at that point yeah and honestly like if you're not a pitcher again numbers vary right i'm not saying you have to throw this hard at this age but if you're not throwing like upper 80s mid to upper 80s like, it's gonna be tough to get looks to go to college, especially right. nowadays when kids throw way fucking harder now. Yeah. You know, like, I've, we have obviously, I've seen kids in a showcase throwing 100 and stuff like that, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But they're at a showcase now, they're getting looked at because they're throwing 100. Mm -hmm. They threw 80 or 75, they're not gonna get looked at. Yeah. Now, with my personal experience, like, of course, I played uh, in high school way back in the day, um, <laughs> 2007. I'm old as fuck now, right? So I never really did showcases, you know. And I was, I'm from a small, very small town in Canada. Um, there's baseball wasn't really big, uh, especially when I was playing. It still is pretty small compared to 
of course, in the States, you know. But um, I never got looked at by any teams. I never got asked to go to a showcase. I never did a showcase. Um, it's not like my family could afford uh, going to showcases, which are pretty fucking expensive. Uh, we couldn't really afford that. So, um, yeah, I never did any of that shit. Uh, my first showcase experience was uh, a sophomore showcase at a JUCO. Uh, so for all the JUCOs uh, around the country, usually they'll throw a showcase for all the sophomores to sign with four-year schools. Mm -hmm. now, that's the first showcase I've been to. And then uh, and I went. I balled out, you know, and they do like a showcase for like pop time and stuff like I was a catcher with pop time. I fucking killed it. And then they threw like a game. I had like a double off the wall or whatever. So like I showcased my skills. And I had literally 60 offers from four-year schools, like literally within a week. Mm -hmm. I remember the funny story. My mom called me. He's like, why is your fucking phone bill like 300 fucking bucks? Like, what is going on? <laughs> like, I'm getting calls. I'm just receiving these calls. Like, I don't know what you're going to do. Like, it's like, but she's like, oh, okay. Like, she thought I was like fucking around. You know, yeah. like, yeah. No, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm just getting calls. Yeah. But like, again, if you don't have anything to showcase, what, you're not really going, show, it's a showcase. Mm -hmm. You need to have something to show. What well, made it hard, especially like, no offense to Hawaii, but the the competition there isn't as good as right. it is here. Of course. So, yeah. and a lot of them there. Don't Same thing with Canada, man. To yeah. Be honest. And, yeah. I mean, I feel like it. here, like here, if you're from like LA or like in like whatever in the south or Florida, or whatever, you're around really good competition. Right. They're like, that's all they really know. They're comp competing against maybe other islands, yep. but like that's the cap of that like the skill. Right. And we don't have a lot of really well-known showcases going out there. I mean, it's a little better now, but when I was there, I mean, I think my first showcase was like eighth grade, and when I came up. I went to like a Stanford or USC showcase and I was a culture shock. I was like, yeah. ice. I thought I was really good. <laughs> right. I, I was suck. Really <laughs> but I was fortunate enough to be like a tall, lanky lefty, you right. know, so right. they saw potential. So, and then I kind of understood like, okay, I need to really like pick it up this out and right. like do what, you know, what they told me. And, um, and then I went to a couple later on and I was fortunate enough to get offers as well. But a lot of kids don't have that luxury there, right. I feel like. Yeah. So they think that what they have is enough. And I think that's what makes it hard. Like, obviously, like going to a showcase, you don't want to like expose yourself and just do sh right. shit. Shit to bed. Yeah, shit to bed. But it also, in the same time, like for me, it, like I wanted to be a professional baseball player. Right. And I was like, yo, I need to do better. Like yeah. I was like, I suck. Like compared to these guys, and then I got better. So that's a benefit, right? Is yeah, because so, you went there and yeah. it exposed your weakness. Because I feel yeah. like. Uh, people that have, uh, they're in the environment, right, in the South, you know, or wherever you're at, if you have the tools, like the radar gun, the evaluation of like a true 60 time versus your, you know, eight year old coach that's sitting there with a hand time, right, like right. that's not, he's gonna be off by half a second. Right. So you don't really know if your 60 time lines up. So if you have right. the tools to be able to say, yes, like I actually am good, or I have decent numbers, I should, should go showcase this, then obviously that's huge. But then there's the other side of it where you don't necessarily know, you may not have the environment or the tools, and so you need that showcase to really expose who you are. Yeah. And I guess the other aspect is, is when it comes to these showcases, is it gonna be an adverse effect? At what age is it adverse effect? So I guess, coming back to Taiki's question, like, what was your show, what well, the purpose of your showcase? Is it more so for college and the next level pursuit? And if so, what age do you think you should start doing it? Because I feel like if you're, maybe a freshman or sophomore, I know they'd go by age, yeah. maybe that won't hinder you as much in recruiting because you're so young that you still have time to develop. And then it could be, to Riley's aspect, it could be a freshman, sophomore, in my opinion, a way to expose yourself, to yeah. really learn how you can compete in those environments. And then, you know, so maybe it's important to start at a young age, maybe yeah. a high school age, to really find that out. And then obviously at, you know, you have your work cut out for you in two, two years, two, three years, and you gotta figure out, okay, my junior, my sophomore, junior, I got to turn it up. Expose yourself unless you, if you don't have the resources or confirm that you have the, you know, the ability to showcase what you have and then use that as, you know, a learning experience or an ability to obviously uh, exploit what you have. Yeah. Well, I think like, like to kind of combine like you and Taiki's question as far as like, when does it matter? Uh, I think it's different for like both if you're trying to go to college and if you're trying to like go pro, pro like yeah. out of high school like yeah. if you are like a high school kid and you're throwing 92 to you know or 91 94 let's say high school kid throwing 91 94 I, I don't think it like no one gives a shit when you like go to a showcase for college like so like you're gonna be able to take your pick for the most part right. like where you want to go however yeah. if you're trying to like try to sign out of high school and you're 91 94 like 
in today's day and age, like that's, yeah, it's not, that, that's like, everywhere. That's yeah. a dime a dozen. Right, right, right. So like maybe it priorities. I think it just it, it really depends on like what your skill set is at that time. So unless you're a guy that's like, you know, I, I think if for a, a college guy, um, I can know my own experience. Like I didn't commit to LSU until I was a senior in in high school, which is like everybody's committing when they're in eighth grade now. Yeah, but yeah. like. At that point, like I didn't really get good until like the very end of my high school career, and I was a senior that had just touched 96, and like they never even saw me play before. I just my uh, travel coach had a relationship with the recruiting coordinator, and just sent him a video of me at an East, East Coast Pro, um, which is like the Pro Showcase in Florida, and I was up to 95 at that event, and like I ended up getting a scholarship to go to LSU, but they never even saw me play in person. But like. From like a pro perspective, like yeah, it was ninety one, ninety five, but so was everybody fucking else yep. at that event. Yep. So you know, like it, it's not like um, you know, just the standards are different depending on what you're trying to do. What do you think, Bradley? Yeah, I would say like as a younger guy, I did like quite a bit of events. So I'm kind of like on the off, like opposite spectrum. Like I did a lot of events growing up. Um, I would get invited to one event, and we'd figure out how to do it, and I'd go. I if I did great, great. If I did shitty, I did shitty. But I, I got the opportunity to see like all the athletes around the country and compare myself to them. So it was always like an, one, an ego check, two, to see where I'm at, and three, like just flat out competition. Like if I saw battling against Hess, he's 91, 95, and I'm maybe 89, 92. Like I'm like, okay, I got to step my like step my game up. So it, I it, it kept me hungry, but I think there's some things to be said is if I didn't invest. If my mother didn't invest all that mother money into me to go like to baseball factory tournaments, uh, I mean perfect game tournaments, I mean just select teams like that, <clears throat> I think I would have done it differently and gone like getting a trainer, getting a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and then actually like going out there and being like two to five, 92, 95, instead of like 89, 91, 92, and saying like oh I did all right, like, but um, I, yeah I I think. At the end of the day, like, it comes down to the athlete and where they want to go. Is it college? Like, you want to go to get a college scholarship, or do you want to be a professional? And then how, how are you going to get there, develop a plan? Um, the showcases, I think, I think they're good. I think you just need to maybe limit back on how many you do and really hone in on, like, what, what schools are going to be there, what scouts are going to be there, how big is it, is it a regional, is it, you know, everyone around the, the country that's coming. Maybe try to figure out some big names there, um, just to see like what you know you're going up against. Because it's not just you in high school; it's, it's you versus everyone in the country, and you got to kind of think about it that way. You might be the best one on your team, like Riley said. He's like, you know, Hawaii. They have what they have. You might have been the best one on your team. You might have been on the best one on your team, but then you open it up, and you're like, you're not, you're I gotta get, yeah, I gotta right. get better. Yeah, yeah. I like that a, a lot. You know, and, and kind of what you're what you're talking about. I feel like. Um, you know, two parents overdo maybe showcases. Yeah. Um, you know, at the same time, uh, I feel like you're wasting time in, yeah. in some uh, circumstances. So, um, but you also talked about in the showcase finding out who's there. Yeah. Right. Uh, you don't necessarily need showcases to get you to the next level. We can we, we can do that, right? S for example was a perfect example, right? It was it wasn't a showcase that got him to LSU. Video. It was him marketing himself, right? So. As an athlete, it may not necessarily be, uh, you know, that you you need the showcase. But if you're going to take the showcase route, it's also what you do after the showcase, right? How you market yourself, because not every coach is going to get a chance to see you. So one way that you can uh, get upper hand is find the coaches that are going to be there and contact the ones that you think you fit in at the school. So it's like if I want to go uh, to, you know, uh, Cal Poly, for instance, and they're at a California showcase. Uh, for my perspective, the best thing you can do is reach out to the coach. Just say, hey, uh, I'm, you know, want to introduce yourself and like meet them in person. You know, find out who they are and go uh, up to them physically, introduce yourself to them, and see if they'll come watch you throw or hit or whatever it is. Um, and then obviously you can do follow-ups on top of that. But getting the stats and, and all the data behind it, obviously that's what they care about. You know, so the velo and a bullpen or you know whatever it might be, getting the, the I guess the, the branding of who you are as an athlete yeah. and showcasing that. Uh, yeah. Whether it's at a showcase or it's you know on the side via Twitter, Instagram, whatever it might be. I'll say what's crazy about that is like one coach, he uh, Alan Embry for the Boston Red Sox. Uh, he was my pitching coach, and one time he said, "It only takes one set of eyes to see you. It doesn't matter who they are, right? Just one set of eyes. Whether 
That guy saw your video, we want him. You're throwing on a backfield, uh, it could be, you know, a junior college, we want him. And then once you start building that and saying like, oh, I have, I have three, these three colleges, well, and you don't truly want to go there, well, now you can use that as leverage to actually go after the college you want. Yeah. Um, but it really only takes one set of eyes anywhere. I mean, one set of videos, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, like, at the end of the day, I think showcases are great to get you, you know, experience, to see what's around the country, the talent, um, but maybe a little bit more focused on getting bigger, stronger, faster in the weight room, eating steak, like Erickson says. So, again, I think the, the biggest emphasis is, is what are you willing to do? You know, what are you willing to do to, to get to that level? Fuck a showcase, and I'm not, there are good showcases out there, I'm, you guys had really good experience, you guys saw exposure. For, for me, like, what the fuck you need that for? You know, like, you can get everything out of yourself without going to showcase, you know, like, so. I'd say, like, self evaluation, too. So, like, one, yeah, like, self evaluate yeah. yourself. Yes, absolutely. Objective about yourself. Yeah, Very. like, where, like, honestly, where you're at as an athlete, like, to date. Yeah. And then, two, like, if you deem you're good enough and right enough to go to showcase, go. If not, Spend that money on a trainer to get bigger, food, I mean, steak, PB&Js, weight room, whatever. whatever. There's I mean, so whatever. many ways to, to, to get better. For me, I don't have time out of the day to go to a show, to me. I'd yeah. rather spend that time to fucking like making my meals or right. training, lifting or whatever. You know, right. like, so I think it's more of a putting on your emphasis. What's your emphasis? Is yeah. your emphasis to go to a showcase, to go to a showcase, or is your emphasis to be the best baseball player as possible? For me, it's always been best baseball player as possible. And, and the reason I didn't want to go to four-year schools right away, I knew I wasn't really going to play. That's another topic that we already talked about. But, like, I play baseball to be the best baseball player as possible. I can't do that without playing, yeah. right? I need my playing time. Uh, and I play baseball to play baseball. Now, I don't play baseball to go to school or go to a showcase or get clout or whatever. None of that shit fucking matters to me. That's this part.